Hey everyone, it's Will from Garage Built Athlete back. We're back on YouTube and today I'm going to be giving you a review of the Nike Metcon 7. Now I have been hammering, hammering, hammering these trainers for the past six months so hopefully I know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to be looking at these shoes from a functional fitness point of view. Don't sue me because I didn't say CrossFit. Um, first things first, let's look at the styling of the shoe. Now this is massively dependent on what colour you go for. These are the sand. Uh, I really like them. They're not everyone's cup of tea, but uh, they tend to go with pretty much everything. Um, the the colour can make a massive difference with this shoe. Like I've seen some really nice colourways and also some real clangers. The good thing is on Nike.com you can customise your colour, so you can customise pretty much everything that you see on this shoe, whatever colour you like, uh, and really make it your own. You can even like add right into the back of them if that's the kind of thing that you're into. It does cost a little more, um, but you know they're going to be a one-off shoe. These are the second pair of Nike Metcons that I've owned. The first pair being the Turbo, the Nike Metcon React Turbo, which I've done a previous review of, so you can go back and check that out. In my opinion, the Metcon 7 is a much more versatile shoe. It's so much better than any other shoe that I've used for training in. Um, it does have its downsides, so in case you're gonna run away and go, oh well, it's the best shoe, so I'm gonna go and buy it, bear with me. I mean, you probably don't listen to me anyway, but bear with me, because I'm gonna run through uh, what it doesn't do so well, as well as what it does. Now, the shoe itself, is quite low profile. Um, I know that a few of my friends uh, at the gym don't like having the big uh, heel support on the back of the shoe because it can dig into the Achilles. Uh, Nike have done a really good job of locking the foot in and also having quite a low profile uh, heel on this shoe. In terms of locking that foot in, they've managed to get a cheeky little feature called the laces lock, which you pop it down, you do your laces up all day long, and when you're ready, stick it to the tongue, and it locks them in. Now, it's not foolproof, because if you're doing double unders or rope climbs, then it does have a tendency to uh, untie. So, always double knot your laces anyway. Top tip from me there, actually a seasoned you know, uh, athlete in the CrossFit space now. Uh, but yeah, do, Double knot your laces because it's not solved the problem, but it is quite nice for keeping laces out of the way. On my other pair of uh, training shoes, I use the, the Nano Unknowns, which I've done a review on previously, so go and check that out. Uh, the laces are really big, really long, really fat, and I have to actually feed them through the cross hatch on the front just to keep them out of the way because they do get in the way of the barbell. Now, these aren't as bad as that, they're quite thin. They do grip well, they do stay in place, uh, but they still do need double knotting. I mean, the first company that's gonna figure out the shoe you don't need to double knot is gonna have my money all day long. Let's talk about some of the tech that is in this shoe. So, first off, you've got this rope climb panel, I suppose it is. So the actual side of your shoe on your insole, it's got this gripped and grooved element to it, which is helping you to get up that rope and then to protect the fabric of the shoe so it's quite a, a fine mesh fabric that's making up the Metcon 7 there's a translucent panel also with a similar groove to help you grip that rope if you can see that there that goes all the way around and feeds to the other side you're going to be gripping onto that rope and um, so far so I've had these for six months you can see the amount of damage that the rope climbs have done. That is specifically from rope climbs. As I uh, come up and down the rope on that foot, that's where the rope sits as I lock it in. So the rope is sitting in here and I clamp that foot over. Uh, and when I come down the rope, I just loosen the grip. So the rope is running along that edge there. That is held up a lot better than the nano unknowns. The unknowns uh, tore through one of the Reebok symbols, uh, which is right on that, that foot there. So yeah, pretty good. 
for consistent use over six months. So the, the toe and the, and the main body of the shoe comes in this sort of multi-layered mesh. So it's like a honeycomb effect. So it is breathable, it is lightweight. It's not too flexible uh, like you might see in the nano fronings where it can get a little loose and the material can stretch. This is really quite good at holding its shape. It's also got this, looks like a toe guard, so a lamination over the, the hex on the front. Now this is really useful for protecting the shoe during things like burpees where the foot turns over onto the floor so you can lay down and get up. After a long period of use, your toe will start to wear through the front of that shoe. Um, and that so far has done a really good job of keeping the material nice and smooth, the look of the shoe really good, whereas in other shoes you might have an issue where your toe starts to form a bit of a peak in the front of the shoe, especially if you don't trim your toenails. Make sure you trim your toenails, it's gross. What else have we got going on in this shoe? Well, all sorts of fancy words. Fancy words like Hyperlift and Nike React. Well, the Hyperlift part of this shoe uh, is really, really good for stability in terms of your big lifts. So your squats and your Olympic cleans and snatches. It keeps the shoe very, very solid. Uh, you can feel that stability when you move, when you jump. This is the first shoe that I've worn where I like to get a bit fussy in my setup. So when I'm standing at the barbell, I kind of move my feet around and try and get, find the right position. The first time I tried to do this in these shoes, they were just stuck to the ground. I had to physically lift them off and move my foot because the grip on them was so good. Uh, you'll see that on the bottom here, that hyper lift is uh, in the heel of the shoe uh, comes through. It's, it's indented in there, so you can't actually, it doesn't raise above the rubber of the sole. And you can see from just from me walking on the gravel out the front of the house, uh, it does get a bit of damage, but if you're just using that you know, in everyday uh, gym use, where gyms don't typically have gravel, that's gonna remain nice and fresh. But apart from that, the hyperlift element of this shoe does add a lot to your performance. So the solid heel on this shoe is a similar type of sticky rubber to what you find on the Metcon React Turbos. Um, it has got a hell of a lot of grip. So like I was saying earlier on, when trying to move your feet and find that position with the barbell, it does grip really well. You can see the grooves all the way through the sole of this shoe. Um, they're holding on really well. After six months, there's very little uh, sort of wearing away, just the very tip of the shoe there. I'll show you for comparison the left foot. I must do something weird with my right foot that I don't do with my left foot, uh, possibly stepping up onto the box with that same foot every time. Uh, but you can see that's about all the wear that's happened on that sole of that shoe. Uh, slight wear on the heel right down the very back there. But they're holding out really, really well. I'd say on average I'm training in these three to four times a week for up to an hour a time. To take a look now at the finish on this shoe. Well, it is really well made. The stitching's nice. The uh, issues that I had with previous Nike shoes around the gluing, they've not quite solved them. We can see it does get a little bit scrappy around some of those joins where one material meets another and that glue tends to seep out. But where we have you know, panels, uh, adhere, adhesion to the, to the other materials, you know, they are holding on really well. There's no lifting, there's no peeling on either shoe in terms of where those different materials meet. The stitching is really good. There's no damage there, there's no fraying there. It's a very high quality build on the Nikes. There has been a little bit of fraying and material pulling through on some of these eyelets on the laces. So this happened very early on. I've got some fluff coming through. See where the material hasn't been very well sealed underneath. Um, and yeah, just generally a bit of wear and tear around the lace area up the top. Could just possibly be from repetitive tying and untying. Um, and again, over a long period of time, it's very difficult to see that from a distance. Uh, I have to really zoom in to show you that that's 
actually got some damage on it. Uh, God, I really hope that all this stuff is in focus. I've got no idea. I'm just throwing shoes at the camera. So fingers crossed this will work out well. I often see online um, sizing coming into question, you know, or oh, size up a half a size or size down a half a size or true to size. And people would second guess themselves. They're a lot of money. You know, you're spending 115, 120 pounds on a pair of trainers. You want them to be the right size the first time you get them. Um, these ones I found, I'm a size 11, I found they are bang on. Only comfortable from a training point of view. I wouldn't wear these you know, ca for casual shoes. Because of that solid heel, walking about in them, it's, it's not as comfortable. I, I would like to wear barefoot shoes. Um, so these are the most comfortable shoes that I've found for, for training in. But these have hit a really good, happy medium in terms of uh, comfort, but also having your foot locked in and ready to train. But I bought all my friends, but actually that's not all of my friends. I've got several other pairs of trainers <laughs> that I'm not gonna bring out, but I wanted to just show you as I was talking through um, the difference in weight of these shoes. Now I, I like a lightweight shoe, especially for training. I like there to feel like I haven't got anything on my feet, which is why I quite like the barefoot shoes for, for casual. So the heavier the shoe, the more material there, that can be distracting. I'm quite fussy with stuff, so having you know things like the laces touching around my ankles or you know whatever it might be, I find that the weight of the shoe uh, for me is a good indication of it being um, quite manoeuvrable. And uh, couple that with stability, uh, that's what I'm looking for in a shoe. Nice and lightweight, nice and fast, and nice and stable. So let me run through some of the weights of these shoes. The, there's marginal difference in them, uh, which I was quite surprised with because some of them seem a lot bigger than others. So in terms of the Nike Metcon 7, this is coming in at a whopping 395 grams per shoe. All right, bear that in mind, per shoe. The Nano Unknown, which I thought was gonna be heavier, was four grams lighter. So 391 for the Nano Unknown with all this gubbins going on. It's just got a very lightweight mesh and lightweight upper without that hyperlift heel as well. It's coming in a couple grams lighter. Converse, the absolute classic, classic gym shoe. Uh, the original plimsoll is coming in at 374 grams. So 20 grams lighter on the Converse. Um, great for lifting, absolutely banging for power lifting, the Converse. If you haven't tried them, give them a go. Highly recommend it. Uh, then we have the Nike Metcon React Turbo, which is coming in at 375 grams. So again, 20 grams lighter than the Metcon 7. I'd expect that from this shoe. Uh, I wear these because I want a nice lightweight shoe. They're not as good for rope climbs um, and double unders, but very, very good for jumping and moving uh, and getting functional. And the original bad boys, my first pair of CrossFit shoes, the Nano 8. These ones, I absolutely love these shoes, they're brilliant. They're probably gonna turn into my gardening Nanos because you have to have, you know, you've got your fancy Nanos, your everyday Nanos, uh, and then you've got your, your household nanos, your going out nanos, and your gardening nanos. Make sure you've got all those guys, if you haven't, what, what you're doing. Uh, these ones were 357 grams, so even lighter again. So that's 40 grams lighter, that's 10% lighter. Um, possibly due to this flex weave upper, not as much tech going on in there, but those are a great shoe. Absolutely love those shoes. Okay, we're coming to the end of this review. Um, one of the reasons is it's absolutely boiling in here. It's like 33 degrees today. Uh, so I'm gonna get a move on before I just melt into a puddle. The, the last couple of things that I wanted to talk about with the Nike Metcon 7. So let's get rid of these bad boys. Concentrate back on the Metcon 7s. It was the things it didn't do quite so well for me. Initially, trying to get the rope climbs going in these shoes. I found it slightly different trying to grip and trying to jump onto the rope. So I was just imagining, you know, with the paneling, with the grooving, that I'll just jump up and everything would be hunky-dory. It wasn't quite the case. There was some slight adjustments I had to make with my feet to be able to lock these in compared to the other shoes that I've worn for rope climbs. Uh, that being said, once I did get used to them, then I've had no problems since. 
the only issue is with the laces lock, it doesn't actually lock them in. Uh, the rope really creates a lot of friction and can undo the lace during the descent on the rope. So again, I've said it before, double knot those laces, boys and girls, running. I don't like running. Maybe a couple times a year I'll be into it. The rest of the time it just sucks. It just sucks so much. I'm sorry. Um, that being said, occasionally I do run and I wouldn't run or want to run a particularly long way in these shoes. These are good for short distances, very similar to the React Turbos, you know, 200, 400, maybe 600 meters. They're okay. They're okay for shuttle runs. They're okay for short distances. I just wouldn't recommend them for going out for you know, a 2K or a 5K or, or anything where you have to do a lot of running in. I would not wear these shoes. Um, but you get what I mean, don't you? You get what I mean, right? We've got some fussy foot people out there. I'm sure we have. Okay, let's wrap this up. The Nike Metcon 7. Um, you can buy these online, Nike.com. You can get them from Sports Direct. You can get them from many, many places. They are a very popular shoe. Uh, you can get them in all sorts of different colors. So hopefully you won't run into somebody wearing the exact same shoe as you. Um, but the chances are you might, because they're a really good shoe. And if you're looking for a great all-round shoe for functional training, particularly with a solid heel and very versatile for jumping, climbing ropes, double unders, then give these a look. I would absolutely recommend them. Thanks for watching everybody. We really appreciate every single view, like, and subscribe that we can get. So if you haven't already, please start pushing all those buttons. It doesn't cost you anything, but we really appreciate you being part of the Garage Built Athlete community. Whilst you're on YouTube, go back and check out some of the reviews I mentioned. We've got trainer reviews, we've got equipment reviews, and we've also got some other content in terms of our podcast. We did one season of the podcast which we really enjoyed and we want to do another one. So the more people that we get subscribed, the more chances that we're going to be able to put that together for you. Okay, I'm done. I'm about to melt. It's time. Let's go.